everybody. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us today. This is Ty Givens, and I am host of CX Collective in the Zone. And today we are talking to Addie Clevett. She is co-founder of Business Success Consulting Group. How are you today, Addie? I'm doing great, Ty. It's great to talk to you again. Yeah, I'm glad to talk to you too. You guys, I did uh, Addie's um, podcast a few weeks back. And um, she talks about simplifying systems. You want to give a little bit of an overview of your podcast? Oh, sure. It's called the System Simplified Podcast. And we had a great time talking about we simplified the customer experience process. And you did a great job outlining the customer experience. And I'm actually going to write a blog about it as well because it, it, you made it so simple. And that's part of the System Simplified Podcast. You know, I feature founders, entrepreneurs, thought leaders like yourself about systematizing the processes of a business so businesses can grow and thrive. So we had a great talk about that. Yeah, yeah. I um, I really did enjoy meeting with you at that time. I was in Florida and then today you're in Florida. So that's the <laughs> irony of everything. We <laughs> traded. We traded. Yeah. yeah. So West Coast for Florida. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Let's start off with a little bit about your background and your career. Sure. Tell me how you became who you are today. Well, you know, I started as an industry engineer for almost, I mean, almost 30 years ago, you know, and I, and I decided to uh, pursue the, the career as an industry engineer because, you know, I found out what is an industry engineer and it's basically combined the, um, my love for science and, you know, I'm definitely very good at science, but also good with people. And it was a combination of both because you do use your skill as an engineer, but you also use your skills as a people person to really make sure that work is more efficient, flows better, that it's being analyzed in such a way that uh, there is consistency and efficiency, et cetera. So that's how I started my career. And I worked at different, actually at, at a global consulting company and did very interesting projects. And, you know, throughout my career, I did many interesting things, met interesting people. And about, um, you know, in 2011, I decided I'm going to start my own business. And at that point, I was doing more general business consulting. And I realized that I was telling my clients that they should, you know, one of the things that they should do is to document their processes and procedures, because it's a must for every business to have that. And I found that you know, week of the week, there would be excuses, so it won't be done. I wouldn't say excuses. It was just not top priority in terms of time or know how, how to do it. And it was just not being done. So then I asked one of my clients, I said, well, you know, how about if I actually document it for you? And said, wow, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like I done it for you. And we, and I did. And then we created this beautiful set of processes and procedures Mm -hmm. And I saw that it's a needed service that entrepreneurs need, but they don't do because of lack of time or lack of know-how or a combination of both. But it is so important for the success of the business so the business can actually grow and scale. Mm -hmm. So that's how really how I felt, you know, I basically stumbled upon this niche that then I just started doing it more and more. And now we are a team of 10 and growing and we are documenting processes and procedures for businesses. That's awesome. And who is your um, ideal client or does it run the gamut? Is it small companies, big companies, entrepreneurs? That's a good company. So that's a good question. So it's definitely, you know, we like to work with entrepreneurs that are growth oriented, right? That they're excited about growing, that they are um, out there and they want to grow more and do more and be successful. You know, it's a mindset, you know, it's a mindset of scaling. It's a mindset of conquering more, of going forward, moving forward, etc. cetera. And um, in terms of size, you know, the, the company has to be, has some maturity to it because they have to have processes in place. Maybe they're not documented, but the processes should exist. And also, um, you know, in the beginning, when you are a startup, you should really do marketing and get leads and get and get your processes kind of like more mature. So we work with companies that, let's say, between 10 and 250 employees, although we work with companies that are bigger, I would say 5 million to 100 million in revenue. And they really have 
they want to get to the next level. They want to scale. They want to grow. The pain points that they're feeling are the pain points of lack of consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, you have different people that are doing different things. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have an employee that has been there for a long time. So it's a knowledge transfer, right? Or somebody that knows how to do it, but the rest don't. So you need to transfer that knowledge. Maybe the owner is still wearing multiple hats and you really want to make sure that, um, you know, you want to shed those hats from the owner. So those have to be documented in order to give it to somebody else. So those are some examples. And we work with a variety of industries, construction, manufacturing, professional services. Got it. That um, the, the documentation part. So typically we work sometimes with clients who don't even have the processes. So we help create them. Right. And it's awesome that you help document them because usually when we work, when we work with um, businesses that are in that space of actually like uh, looking to get ready to scale specifically CX, because that's our zone, right? Um, we find that a lot of information just lives in people's heads. That's and, exactly right. Yeah. And, and then when it's time to like pull it out, you'll find there's a lot of gray area, a lot of um, just decision making that people are doing on the fly based on their experience, having been part of that company for however long. Do you find that too? Absolutely. And yeah, we don't just document, we also create, I mean, obviously awesome. in specific, um, like for customer experience, you no, know, we'll rely on experts like you to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But what it, what I meant by you have to develop the processes. So so there are processes. You know, if the company is already operating, you have customers, you have clients, you also have processes. Right. You might not have them documented, but as you said, it's in somebody's head. So the main thing that needs to happen is to actually identify what is the process? You know, what I like, I like to give this example a lot. It's kind of like when you wake up in the morning, you have a process. You might not be aware of it, but you do have a process. You, you have a process of how you make your coffee. You don't make coffee differently every single day. And unless you're a very unique, creative individual, I think the majority of us, either the tea or the coffee or the water, whatever we, we drink when we first get up, you know, it's like we have a process, you know, we do it. So, but it's a matter of then documenting the process so it can be improved and others can follow. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And the, the, that to me, um, the documentation part, because that is, it's a lot of work and it can be very tedious, right? Because you're trying to, you, you got to get it right. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no room for error. What motivates you when you're in the thick of things and you're and you go into a company and it's a bowl of spaghetti and you're like, wow, like what motivates you to continue to get through that bowl of spaghetti to really get them to where they need to be for scale? Yeah, that's a very good question. You know, I'm definitely motivated, like persistent. I love bringing order and organizations to things and I like to see things to it done. And that's what I promise our clients is like, you know, we're going to get it done for you. So I just that sense of accomplishment definitely motivates me, like not to like stop in the middle, but continue and persist and get to that final product, which then look at it and contemplating it, which is amazing. But also, you know, to that point, what I like to do is I like to actually figure out the why with my clients. Like, why do you want to document the processes? And if we actually identify that, that is the driving force and the motivation for the client because they can stop and they go like, oh, this is tedious. So it's too much. or I have other things to do. But in order for me to help them keep the eye on the mountain where we are going, I always ask them why. Is it because you want to onboard another 10 employees next year? Okay, great. But in order for you to do that, we need to have those documented. Is it because you want to take your two, three weeks vacation without anybody bothering you or calling you, great. So that's what we are documenting it. So now, now it's tough or hard, but let's get through it so you can get to your point, to the point that you want to be. Maybe it's because you have an employee that maybe has health issues or somebody that has been with you and they have all the knowledge and, you know, what if something happens to them tomorrow? That's a risk. So in order to actually handle that risk that can motivate people to push forward. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, that makes a ton of sense. What would you say that business success consulting group is doing differently than their competition? 
You know, I think we have a very unique way of asking questions and understanding. We have, we're all very professional and the final product that we give to our clients is very clear, very professional. And we also provide a coaching in terms of, we provide a coaching on how to make sure that those processes are followed by all. And I think what is also unique about us is that we've been doing it for so long that we know the problems that business owners um, run into. We know that it is not easy to shut down the business for two, three days and just concentrate on writing processes. So we develop the way that we do it is concurrent with you working on in the business, on the business, you know, with your employees working in the business. You know, we, we accommodate the way that we structure the engagement. So it is part, it, it fits in with your day-to-day -day operation without interrupting them. That's really nice. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Um, so, okay. We kind of touched on this, but let's go a little bit deeper on this one. So if someone wants to operate their business independently of them, so let's say that I am like, you know what? I love CX Collective, but I don't want to have to be here every day. What would you recommend I do? Well, I would recommend, first of all, I mean, you need to get, I mean, it's kind of like throwing the ball to somebody. You have to have somebody to catch it. So you have to have employees that will actually catch it, right? Then what I would recommend is that you map all the processes in the business, you know, your sales, your operations, your HR, you know, your business development, everything. Mm -hmm. And then map out under each one, like what are the core processes that are being done? And then take a look at the whole picture and ask yourself, okay, where, if I had right now well-documented processes and procedures, I will get the biggest return on investment in terms of like you will actually be able to pass that hat to somebody else. And then you have to start figuring out how you're going to pass that hat, but actually writing and documenting what you do. And if you find it is impossible to do, then you really have to look at what systems you have to implement in order to make it possible. So for instance, if you have the list of all of your clients in your head, then you better figure out a CRM that you can actually enter the data there and then create a system that whenever you get a new lead, it will go into your CRM and not somewhere in your head or maybe on your phone, right? I mean, I'm just giving like a general example, but that will be like making the system independent of you. So that will be part of creating the process. You also have to make sure that the processes are available to those people that are going to do something about it. I like that. I like that. I, um, I, my team will tell you that I, I definitely suffer from things living in my head. Um, and I think it's just because when I started out, it was just me. So I was so used to doing so many things that um, it is, it's unnatural sometimes for me to put something elsewhere to be captured. So I, what you're saying is completely spot on. So I, and I know I'm yeah. in the, going in the right direction, but um, there's still work to be done for sure. Um, for all of us, yes. <laughs> if you, if we were to talk about, and in, in, um, in CX, we always talk about tech stacks and recommended tools that companies can use to like increase productivity or to be successful. Uh, what would you, what, what's your ideal tech stack? Like which tools do you recommend for productivity? Sure. So there are different categories. You know, obviously you have your um, internal communications. So email, I use, we use email in our, in our company here to, for external communication with, so email is basically like a gate. It's like, I look at it like you have a mailbox. Okay. Like in, in front of your house, you have a mailbox and you receive mail. Now you're not going to let the mail just sit in your mailbox. So I don't use my inbox as a storage place. You know, it just, it's a place to receive mail and then route it to the right place. So if you look at it, like if we draw that picture, we have the mailbox. So that's the inbox. You get the emails. Now I have an executive assistant. She is wonderful. And she, you know, labels the emails and routes them and put them where they need to be in order to act on it. Right. So behind that, like, where do we route it? So we have internal communication channels. So that can be teams or Slack or some kind of a messaging system where it's very organized by channels. And I actually have a policy on how we use it. So everybody uses it the same way. And we have rules on how we use it so it doesn't get cluttered. And that's how we actually keep the communication going on a day-to-day -day basis. So that will be the internal communication. So 
For instance, if I get an email and I want to communicate about it to a team member, I'm not going to forward the email and talk about it to the team member on email. I will basically I have the integration between my email. I, we use Slack or you can have an integration between the email and teams. And then I will for, I will basically um, refer to that email and start a conversation back and forth on Slack about that email as an example. So I like that um, communication tools, which is very important to keep it open, but to keep it flowing. Mm -hmm. Then I use a task management software, which would be something like Asana or Monday.com or ClickUp. And that is where we get a task via email or a task, not even via email, but somewhere, somehow else the task arrives or there is a request or internal task, all the tasks go there by project, by board, everybody's on it. Again, we have rules on how to use the different boards and we collaborate that way. So the communication is very clear and it eliminates the, the need to call us one another or to text. I mean, those are the communication lines. So any text stack that, that helps the communication to flow is very important. So we talk about that. And then I use, um, and I also use it with my clients, a process documentation software. Mm -hmm. So a process documentation software is a specific platform where you actually enter, you document your SOPs on that platform. And that platform monitors who goes in there, how often you can get people to sign off on procedures. You can get them to review it. You know, there is like you can schedule the reviews, et cetera. So that is also a very important part of our technology. And of course, then you have other, um, you know, tech that we use like Calendly for calendaring. So you want to use the software in order for you to monitor the schedule. You know, we use we have a CRM that we use where we keep track of our leads. Um, you know, I would recommend if you are industry specific, then you use some kind of a software that money that basically helps with your workflows. I mean, we use the task, man the generic task management that we adapted to our industry, which works great. But if you are, let's say, um, a service, prof like a professional, like in the home, in the trades, so you will use something like Service Titan or House Call Pro or something like that, mm -hmm. that will actually um, enable you to do your work better. That makes sense. Um, that makes a lot of sense. I understand what you're saying about the uh, external versus internal communication tools. We've seen a lot of um, abuse on Slack, meaning not like abuse, like, you know, harming each other, but just, you know, flooding information into Slack um, and a lot of people misinformation because of the way that things, the way that it's handled. So I know internally for us, I, what I tell my team is that Slack for me is almost like you're coming to tap me on the shoulder to tell me something, you know, like, Hey, heads up X, Y, Z, um, as opposed to, or you have a quick question or you need something as opposed to a place where we're, you know, putting specific information that we're going to need to go back to that, that actually goes in a different, um, area. Is that similar to what you guys do? Absolutely. So we use like the tasks themselves. Uh, we use ClickUp, but it's similar to Asana or Monday.com. So the tasks themselves go there and the conversation goes in there. There is an integration between Slack and ClickUp because sometimes if I, for me, Slack is if I want an immediate response, right? ClickUp, I check once a day. I'm not on there all the time. My team works on it, but in Slack, if I need an answer right away, or, you know, if I need to communicate to my assistant and ask her, you know, please, um, you know, reschedule something, or if I have a question to one of the consultants or one of the technical writers, then we have specific channels, right? And we answer the questions. And it's very important for me to actually keep a thread of the communication. What I feel like Slack is being, as you said, abused is when people just throw communication one after the other. But we definitely, we have a, even a written policy about it that we answered everything in a thread so that way the conversations keep mm -hmm. are contained in one topic and um we somehow managed to to keep it really well and we i have team i mean team members that are all over we're not in one we are remote and we are all over we're located in different cities and we implemented a daily report in slack so we have channels for everybody for a daily report and as i tell my staff it's not to micromanage you it's just so we are all aware of what we are doing, because if we don't see each other, you know, and I, 
I tried to communicate to a team member, but they just took a break, but they didn't announce it, then I don't know. I don't, I don't, I cannot see that their desk, that there is, it's empty. Or I go to the reception area and look at the signing log, right? I mean, I, I don't see it. So we are really conscientious of keeping each other informed. So we know how to get a hold of each other, but we also respectful if people need like their quiet time or they can't answer any messages, etc. That makes sense. When you, uh, you talked a lot about the documentation and processes that you've created internally and the ones that you create for your clients. And you mentioned helping the client to ensure that those processes are followed. Can you give some tips on how you do that? Of course. So, you know, once we document, we're done with the documentation. The main thing, the most important thing in order for the processes to be followed by all is that everybody knows about the processes. Mm -hmm. Because they're not going to be, if we document it and then people don't read it, they're not going to be followed. So the first thing is then we ensure is that everyone reads those processes. So let's say, for instance, we wrote the processes for the sales department and we work with two or three salespeople to write it, but there are 10 salespeople. So what we do is after we wrote the processes and they got approved by the leadership team, we then have everyone read it and give us feedback. So we send um, a feedback form to see how they like the processes, if they're easy to read, did we miss anything, how they see themselves using it, etc. So we get that feedback, but we make sure that people are actually reading it. Once we have done that, then we um, work with the leadership team. So let's say we're talking about the sales department. So with the sales manager, to see how we're actually going to use those processes in a day-to-day -day managing of the salespeople. So, for example, we did it with a manufacturing company. We did it, we documented the sales procedures. And then for six weeks, we actually attended, one of the consultants attended their sales meeting every Monday morning. And we listened to issues. So let's say there was an issue, you know, that... Um, they were selling manufacturer, they were manufacturing company. And maybe the issue was that, um, you know, the sales order didn't arrive on time because it wasn't released on time to manufacturing, whatever it was, right? So that created problems for the salesperson because they weren't able, you know, they, they heard about it from the customer and, and, you know, they weren't able to then place the second order. Okay, good. So there was an issue there with the um, manufacturing between the production and the sales, right? Somehow there was a break in communication or it wasn't clear, et cetera. Well, there is a flaw in the process and we documented the processes. So we go back and we open, you know, we, we bring it up on the screen. Where is the process? What SOPs, what standard operating procedures apply to this scenario? What is written? And then we look it over and we see what is missing. What is missing from that standard operating procedure? What step was not, either, either it's not missing and the step was not followed. So then with the group, we figure out why it was not followed and how to follow it. Or if it was missing, what can we add? So it's not missing anymore. That makes sense. That makes sense. Now you've made all of this sound like, because this is what you do every day. So you're like, yes, this is just what we do. But um, for someone who is uh, thinking about the fact that they're, they need to go into process documentation mode, how long would you say it typically takes to, to do the documentation process? You know, and I'm going to answer with it. If the answer nobody wants to hear, it depends. It really depends on the maturity of the company. It depends on what you want to document. How deep do you want to go? You know, it can take really anywhere from three to nine months. Okay. I mean, that's fair enough. And I, I always believe in providing a realistic expectation um, because I, if you say it'll take us three weeks and then it takes three months, nobody's happy. But if it, if you say it takes three months and it takes two, everybody's happy. That's so, exactly right. Yeah. So I think that that's, um, that's a really good idea. Okay. So I'm going to go into just some fun little questions about you. Um, and yeah, just, you know, let's get to know you a little bit better. Yeah. All right. Describe your favorite weather. You know, I love Oregon, beautiful Oregon fall weather when the skies are so blue and you have these beautiful fall colors and it's about 60 something degrees and it's just gorgeous. That is one of my favorite, favorite weather. 
That sounds really nice. I'm just picturing a blue sky with lots of green trees and a cool. Place. Oh, it's green, but it's like fiery orange, and I oh, see if I, sure. it's just gorgeous. I just went for a walk there, and I just um, it is like one of the most beautiful things. Let me see if I can actually show it to you. You're gonna love okay. it. It's I know if our listeners can can Ball see it or not, favorite. but it's it was just like I was taking a walk, and I was like, oh, this is just amazing can you see that yeah it's a little bit it's a little difficult but it looks so pretty i can see the blue sky and the greens and the yellow and the yellow and the orange that's next to my house it's so beautiful it's like the blue it's like blue 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 skies it's just amazing i love that okay uh what's your favorite food my favorite food is um you know i like um salmon <laughs> actually okay. like a good salmon dish you know pacific northwest there's salmon and asparagus and a good salad that's that's wonderful that, that's good and healthy <laughs> yeah that's right There's that's no right rest. king uh, salmon from from the pacific northwest or alaskan salmon is like i love it <laughs> okay there's a restaurant uh not too far from here called little sister that we go to and we just tried a salmon dish there and I've literally been thinking about it ever since. And I'm like, <laughs> I have to get back. But the salmon piece was so small that you probably need to order two, but it was just, it was delicious. It was delicious. Amazing. Um, what's your favorite pastime? My favorite pastime is really, um, I love exercising. I like working out, but I love hiking outdoors. I love going for walks outdoors. And I like hiking. And again, the Pacific Northwest where I live, it's just so gorgeous. I mean, the, the Columbia Gorge, you know, the Oregon coast, the, the many parks that we have. I mean, this is like, you know, people love hiking here for a reason and living here for a reason because it's just so beautiful. That sounds nice. All right. Okay. So if you weren't running the Business Success Consulting Group, what would you be doing? Oh my, I think I would probably start a similar business. I just love that. <laughs> I love what I do. I mean, it's anything that helps people, you know, I would, you know what, actually, no, if I was not running it, what I would do is I would have a business where I connect people because that's really what I love to do. It's like in terms of a pastime, I mean, it's not a pastime, it's not a hobby, but it's kind of is, I would have like a business matchmaking you know it's kind of like and i do it naturally anyway but doing it as a business is like finding people that align with each other and want to need to meet each other and all that that's just, just like energizes me i love connecting people that's awesome that's awesome okay just two more quick questions yeah um are you currently reading anything that you want to share yeah you know i decided i'm going to revisit the book go giver by bob berg I interviewed him for my podcast and I just love that book and it has so many good lessons, life lessons. And it really, you know, it, it just, it's all about spreading kindness and help and reciprocity. And I just like, it, it motivates me. So I'm rereading it. I'm re-listening to it on Audible. I love that. Now, it sounds like you may recommend that one, but are there any other books that you would recommend? You know, there are so many, I don't even know where to start, right? Because I'm always like, you know, it's kind of like, it depends on where I'm at. Like if I want to know more about marketing, then I would do that. Or if I want to know more about, try, I also try to listen to books that are not, either great stories that are inspirational. You know, I love Isabella Allende is one of my favorite authors and I love her storytelling because it's, it's stories of courage, it's stories of, um, trying something new. It's stories of not, not giving in to any stops. You know, it's, it's something, it, and it's great novels, great stories, right? So that is also, I have it on my Audible as well, her latest one. And it's just like anything that I feel like is when I, I want to get inspired. So it's not always just business books or something, you know, it's just like I love books about travel, about different countries, about different cultures, just learning about things that, you know, that are inspirational. I love that. I love that. I have really enjoyed chatting with you again. I'm, I'm glad that we were able to coordinate schedules and make this happen. Um, can you tell our listeners how they can find out more information about you and your company? Sure. So I'm very active on LinkedIn. So it's Adi Klevit. Just look me up in LinkedIn. So it's A-D-I and K-L-E-V-I-T. 
You can also um, call or text at 503-662-2911. And of course, our website, which is bizsuccesscg.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time today. I have really enjoyed this. And I hope that we just we find another reason to do it in the future. We will. I mean, absolutely would love to have you back on my podcast as well. And thank you, Ty. You're a great interviewer and I enjoyed this interview. Thank you. Oh, I enjoyed having you. All right, everybody, that wraps up this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to Addie for joining us and I'll see you on the next one.